Hello guys, welcome back to another video from your channel and today we are going to talk about one of the most crucial steps of the satellite image processing or one of the most important issues in satellite image processing. So exactly uh, what we are going to talk about today is classifications. And commonly uh, in uh, image classification or satellite image processing, we have two kind of classifications. One, one is supervised classification and the next one is unsupervised classification. And supervised classifications, we train our classifiers and we will educate our classifiers to consider a, a specific fixed pixels as a, a specific class. And in unsupervised classification, it's an automatic classification. We never train and we never said classifier, which pixels would be in which classes. So in trained or supervised classifications, number of the classes will be equal to the, our, our ROI classes. And then you will see what's the ROI. So in automatic classification or supervised classification, we can assign number of the classes and we can tell how many classes do we need or do we want in supervised classification. So let's just start through the software here. And here I have an atmospherically corrected image from last tutorials. So in north part of Afghanistan and southern part of Tajikistan, the Middle East, uh, in Central Asia. So here is Amu River, and we have a water class, and this area covered by vegetation. We have another class, and in this area, you see an urban area or belt of area, and also we have another belt of area here and maybe some belt of areas in these locations and bare soils. So uh, let's try uh, the classification. So now this image is ready to classify, you know, um, but whenever you want to classify a raw image and uh, we download it. If you download an, a raw image to apply a classification on that image, and never mind to remember uh, to apply atmospheric and radiometric calibration and atmospheric correction on that. But atmospheric correction is not required for any processing. And the atmospheric correction can be defined by your objective of your image processing, your research, or any of this. So let's check the correlation between the bonds before starting your classification. So we have uh, various methods in envy to check the correlation between the bonds uh, and when is you can plot a scatter plot from here uh, exactly from this point to see how is the correlation of the your bonds of your input data and here, let's switch. Uh, 
uh, in here you can see for example if we plot uh, scatter plot between bond 1 and bond 2 here you see it's it has approximately a direct and linear correlation and whenever you change the bonds for example uh, bond 1 and bond 3, bond 4 and bond 1, bond 5 and bond 1 and also bond 3 and bond 4 and the correlation between uh, the same bond must be the one uh, as you see here quietly the correlation is one and also you can calculate a statistic for your bonds here for from here for calculating or computing statistical bond here and you can check through this and we don't want to save any output here it takes a little bit time the statistics for all the entire bond must be calculated and it definitely will help you uh, to get more valuable information about the bonds that include your uh, intended classification data. And graphically, you can see here the, uh, for example, mean max and mean of the uh, your data in different uh, wavelengths and data values, and also the most important part of the this computation is here. For example, your correlation. You can see the correlation between bond and bond one is definitely one. And bond one and two is approximately one. And you see here a uh, correlation value of the acceptable uh, number or uh, range of the values here. So uh, these are the ways that you can check the correlation between the bonds of your image before applying the classification. So let's go through the uh, classification methods. And here, when you click on the classification tool, you have different tools here. For example, uh, decision tree that uh, consists of many sub tools and uh, post classification, for example, confusion matrix and uh, combined classes uh, or overly classes or rock core. Uh, mainly, these are the post processing that you will uh, apply uh, according to your necessity, according to your objective or your research uh, after applying your classification. And here we have two types of classification. So the first one is supervised classification that you see here, so for vector matching, spectral information, and add to uh, adaptive coherence estimator. So we will talk uh, a little bit details about each of them. And for now, just we're going to apply a uh, and supervised classification on this image here. We have two types of classification here. One is ISO data and the next one is KMENS. Let's start by ISO data. And here it asks you to select your input data. Now my input data is 
uh, atmospherically corrected Landsat image and subset it according to my region of interest. And here you can specify the range of uh, your image that you want to classify. It. And for this image, I'm going to the whole area of this image because I have subsetted this image uh, in this type of radiometric correction. And you can mask some areas or apply some mask layers you, if you have. And from here, uh, you can subset your bonds. Uh, either you want to apply this classification on whole uh, the seven months or specify specific months for classification to the classifier. Okay, now click OK. In here, it asks you, uh, for example, uh, uh, the minimum number of the classes and the maximum number of the classes, each class here. Uh, in the maximum iteration, and uh, it will be definitely in, in, in important for you. So, uh, the maximum merge pairs, and I'll leave all this uh, 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 by default, and I specify four classes here. Uh, and uh, uh, whenever uh, you can change in each step of uh, your classification to uh, get a better result and to observe it, which of these parameters can work better. Uh, definitely all these parameters are uh, uh, practical uh, uh, part of this, uh, this uh, process. Uh, whenever, uh, for example, you can see it, uh, a standard deviation, maximum standard deviation, or maximum distance error here, for example, uh, when you see it, your iteration, for example, 10, and you can change that it works okay or not. and. Uh, after that, you can increase or decrease the iteration of the UR process or any other pro parameters. For example, I save this as a data, uh, open and OK. Now the classification is applying the iteration. Now you see this is the first iteration of the thing. And this will be templated for 10 times and it will iterate to retrieve a feasible result for you.
Now the classification is uh, completed. And as you see here, and uh, four classes are extracted uh, by applying this classification. Uh, as you see here, uh, uh, most of the classes are included external run pixels. For example, these areas are classified as water here. Uh, and in vegetation covered area, even we can see the belt of areas here. So you can change your iteration and uh, apply the classification for multiple times to retrieve an acceptable result. Uh, and also, uh, we apply the k means here too, and uh, it asks uh, the number of the classes, for example, the five classes, okay, and the maximum number of iteration, and I select two, it will be iterated. Uh, and the threshold of the change, uh, you can specify the percent of the threshold uh, of, to change your classes. So uh, I save this as k means and apply OK. And you see here the result of the uh, Cayman's classification. Uh, so this classified our image into five classes. Uh, even um, this result is more worse than our previous result. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, our tutorial related or uh, about the unsupervised classification or automated classification.